Blood is a red liquid laden with rich nutrients and flowing in the vessels. It is one of the basic substances that constitute the body and maintain its viral activities. To carry out its normal actions, it has to flow within the vessels. Blood is a form of qi, a very dense and material one. Moreover, blood is inseparable from qi as qi infuses life into blood. Without qi, blood would be an inert fluid. Blood is derived mostly from the food qi produced by the spleen. The spleen sends food qi upwards to the lungs, and through the pushing action of lung qi, this is sent to the heart, where it is transformed into blood. The transformation of food qi into blood is aided by the original qi. In addition, a sense stored in the kidney generates bone marrow, and marrow in turn is transformed into blood. Therefore, we can say that blood is generated by the interaction of post heaven qi of the stomach and spleen and pre heaven qi of the kidneys. That's why, to nourish blood, we need to tonify the spleen and kidneys. So, what are the functions of blood? Blood flows in the blood vessels. In the interior, it reaches the internal organs. In the exterior, the skin, muscles, tendons, and bones. It unseasonally nourishes and moistens the organs and tissues in the entire body, thereby maintaining their normal activities. For example, liver blood nourishes and moistens the eyes and sinews so that the eyes can see properly and the sinews are flexible and healthy. Liver blood also nourishes and moistens the skin and the hair, ensuring that the skin is not too dry and the hair remains shiny and healthy. Another example of this, heart blood nourishes and moistens the tongue, keeping it fresh and pink. Blood is also the material basis for mental activities. If blood and chi are both abundant and smoothly flowing, then the mind is shaped, perception king, and movement nimble. That's why blood is said to have the function of housing the mind. Now, let's take a look at the relation of blood with internal organs. First, heart. The heart governs blood and the blood vessels, which are responsible for its circulation. The heart is also the place where the blood is made through the agency of heart fire. Second, spleen. The spleen is related to blood in two ways. First of all, it is the origin of blood as it produces put qi, which is the basis for the formation of blood. Secondly, spleen qi ensures that the blood remains in the blood vessels and does not extravasate. Third, liver. The liver stores blood. This important function has several meanings. First, the circulation of blood in the body. When a person is erect and engaged in normal everyday movement, blood flows to the muscles and sinews. When a person lies down, blood flows back to the liver. In the liver, blood regenerates itself. Thus is the importance of having adequate rest in cases of deficient liver blood. Second, blood stored in the liver has the function of moistening the eyes, which promotes good sight, and moistening the sinews, which promotes the flexibility of choice. Third, a very important aspect of the liver storage of blood is in the relation to physiology and pathology of menstruation. Blood in the liver supplies the uterus with blood and is closely related to the penetrating vessel. Therefore, liver blood is extremely important for a regular and healthy menstrual function. Lungs The lungs affect blood in several ways. First of all, they assist the spleen in sending food qi to the heart, where it is transformed into blood. Besides, the lungs control all the channels and blood vessels. This means that the lungs infuse qi into blood vessels to assist the pushing action of the heart. And finally, kidneys. As mentioned above, the kidneys contribute to the production of blood in two ways. 
original qi assists in the transformation of food qi into blood, and the kidney essence can also be transformed into blood. Of all the above organs, however, the heart, spleen, and liver are the most important ones with relation to blood. The heart governs blood. The spleen makes and holds blood in the blood vessels, and the liver stores blood. And now we are moving on to the relation of blood with other vital substances. First, blood chi relationship. There is a very close relationship between chi and blood. Chi generates blood. Chi generates blood because food chi is the basis for blood, and also lung chi is essential for the production of blood. Therefore, if chi is sufficient, blood will eventually also be deficient. In practice, it is often necessary to tonify chi in order to nourish blood. Chi moves blood. Chi is the motive force for blood. Without chi, blood would be an inert substance. There is a saying about this aspect: when chi moves, blood follows. If chi stagnates, blood congeals. And next is qi holds blood. Qi holds blood in the blood vessels, thus preventing hemorrhages. This function belongs primarily to the spleen. Besides, kidney qi also plays an important role in keeping blood in the uterus vessels. The above three aspects of qi blood relationship are often expressed in the saying, qi is the commander of blood. Blood nourishes qi. Various blood relies on qi generating, pushing, and holding actions. Qi, on the other hand, relies on the nutritive function of blood. Second, essence blood relationship. Blood and essence mutually affect each other. Each of them can transform into the other. As we have already seen, essence plays an important role in the formation of blood. On the other hand, blood continually nourishes and replenishes the essence. Finally, we're going to talk about blood pathology. There are three basic cases of the pathology of blood. First of all, blood deficiency. Blood can be deficient when not enough is manufactured. This is mostly caused by a deficiency of spleen qi and stomach qi. Secondly, blood heat. This is mostly due to liver heat, as the liver stores blood. Liver heat or liver fire is transmitted to the blood, making it hot. Finally, blood stasis. Blood can fail to move properly and stagnate. This may be caused by stagnation of qi, by heat, or by cold. And blood stasis often causes pain. Now let's summarize what I've discussed today. Blood is a red liquid laden with rich nutrients and flowing in the vessels. It is one of the basic substances that constitute the body and maintain its vital activities. Blood is generated by the interaction of the post heaven chi and the pre heaven chi. Three main functions of blood: nourishing the body, moistening the body, and housing the mind. The heart, spleen, and liver are the most important ones in relation to blood. The heart governs blood. The spleen makes and holds blood in the blood vessels, and the liver stores blood. Four aspects to the blood chi relationship: chi generates blood, chi moves blood, chi holds blood. And blood nourishes qi. Three basic cases of the pathology of blood: blood deficiency, blood heat, and blood stasis. And that's all I want to say in this video. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.